Leaking has always been central to journalism, people telling journalists things they shouldn't. But in the last few decades, leaking has become much more organized. We've seen the leaking of material about the Vietnam War in the Pentagon Papers by Daniel Ellsberg to the New York Times. We saw the Watergate affair where two reporters on um, the Washington Post, through leaks, got the story which in the end forced President Nixon to resign. More recently, we've seen uh, Julian Assange WikiLeaks um, leaking uh, documents from the American Diplomatic Service, and uh, we've also seen Edward Snowden's huge leak from the National Security Agency. These have been extremely important. But the biggest leak, both in terms of size and I think of importance, was of papers taken from a Panamanian law firm which dealt with clients, personal clients, individuals, corporations, even in some cases governments, which wished to evade taxes. Panama is a tax haven and the firm, the law firm from which the documents were taken um, was using its expertise to stop its clients, its many, many clients, from um, paying uh, in some cases any tax at all but at any rate much less tax than they otherwise would pay. Uh, millions of documents were released by someone who is still anonymous, who still believes that he may be in danger, he or she may be in danger if uh, the name is revealed, but he gave the material, uh, which he downloaded from the internet, he gave the material to a German daily newspaper, the Süddeutsche Zeitung, uh, which then called in um, the uh, consortium of investigative journalists based in, in New York. They took a year to go through these documents and used over a hundred journalists all over the world to make sense of the documents, to check out their, um, their veracity with prime ministers, with corporation heads, with the people mentioned in the documents, until they had and still have a, a whole series of stories of important, usually wealthy people who were trying to avoid taxes. And I think that's important, the most important one, because it chimes in with what is now the case, that people all over the world, especially people, working people who don't make much money, who are worried about uh, their income and about their expenditure, it chimes in with the worries they have and with the perception that the societies, the American society, the European societies, um, Russian society, South American, African, all over the world, there are very, very rich people, very often in positions of power, who not only have got huge sums of money at their disposal, but also are trying to evade the taxes which the citizens themselves have to pay. And it's that dichotomy between huge wealth and relative poverty and the fact that the people in, with the huge wealth are increasing that wealth by evading taxes, which the common man and woman has to pay, which gives the Panama Papers their huge importance and their political weight. The leaking uh, culture will continue, um, partly because, I think, Panama Papers shows how powerful it can be. The Snowden documents, were contested because many people thought and still think that they may have put people in danger. The WikiLeaks, as I said earlier, were interesting but not exactly world-shaking. The Panama Papers have the potential uh, and carry with them the seeds of future leaks like this to rouse people who are angry with the enormous gap between rich and poor um, uh, and to perhaps lead to a greater crackdown on tax evasion uh, and changes in the both in the law and in politics.